Hi everyone, welcome to another video with me Laura and today I thought I would talk all about limited palettes and in particular the Zorn limited palette and uh, I only learned about the Zorn particular lim limited palette only a few weeks ago and um, I've always worked, I've always enjoyed restricting myself in painting with only using, being able to use certain colours but what's quite interesting about the Zorn limited palette is you just use black um, so in this case I'm using a Mars black and a, uh, a white, a titanium white and I also, you also use a red and a yellow so I'm using, these normally what you use for a Zorn limited palette is a yellow ochre and a vermilion red, so mine's a transparent vermilion red, it's just the only one I have um, but what I, what I wanted to do was if you look at the paintings on the left hand side the one at the bottom is a previous Zorn limited palette painting <laughs> it's a mouthful and um, I thought I would challenge myself and try and do a seascape with only using black and white and red and yellow basically and obviously using just those colours and not being able to use green and blues in when painting water is extremely difficult and you've got the slight benefit of painting a sunset. Um, you can see the painting at the top uh, on the left hand side is a, just a normal painting of water and this is what I'm going to try and recreate using just these four colours, the black and white and the red and the yellows. So obviously I'm not going to be able to use blue or green but I need to be able to create this sort of atmosphere of water, the coolness of water. Um, so we'll, we'll see see how we go. So what I'm doing here at the moment is I'm just mixing a nice peachy pink colour using the white, the red and the yellow. And uh, that's quite easy with sunsets. You can, uh, you can just sort of have some nice peachy colours and red colours, quite warm colours. So um, it's okay at the moment. I can, uh, I've got the colours to work with. So I'm just making it a little bit whiter. Um, it's a little bit, a little bit too, too red. I'm just lightening that up. And I'm kind of doing an amalgamation of the top and the bottom, kind of following the bottom painting really. Um, just a simple sunset, creating light with the lighter colours. And uh, what I'm doing now is I'm creating some coolness, more of a sort of grey colour, uh, a purpley grey colour, and that's a mixture of the white, the black and the red. And if you just mix the black and the red, you'll get quite a sort of very dark purple. Uh, but to make it more grey and useful in a sky, I've just added quite a lot of the white as well and I'm just adding more white to blend those two warm and cool colours together in the sky so we've got a kind of very basic uh, sunset painting and I actually really enjoy painting sunsets I used to paint sunsets quite a lot um, I've been painting for over 30 years now if we count painting in my childhood as well um, and I used to, I consider myself more of an artist and if you follow me um, because of my crochet then I've become more known for my crochet designs but uh, I've actually been an artist much longer and over a decade ago I used to sell a lot of artwork on eBay in those days and uh, have, I had local exhibitions and things and my style though was very flat um, and I, I, did, I did exhibit and things and I did sell paintings but they were very very sunset based, very flat and lacked a lot of light and I became really demoralised with painting um, so I, I stopped for over a decade. Um, what I'm doing here is I'm just adding more of that purpley colour, so it's the black and the red with a little less white so it's a bit darker and I'm just creating some clouds. And so what I wanted to do returning to art was really kind of spontaneous. Um, it happened last year after my granddad passed away and I just I bought this little sketchbook from the Eden Project in Cornwall and um, I just started sketching and it's kind of just gone on from there really so I, I started at the beginning of this year doing the 100 day, 100 day project um, and that's painting uh, every day for 100 days and I managed to do it and I, was, I really loved doing it and when I stopped, when I finished, I really missed painting every single day. Um, so I'm actually doing it again at the moment, I was going to do a shorter um, 
sort of challenge but I've decided to ramp it up to 100 days again so and if you want to follow that you can um, head over to my Instagram page if you have Instagram happy berry arts with an s on the end <laughs> the art YouTube channel just has ART um, so yeah so what I'm doing now is just going to peel off that tape so I use a little bit of tape just so I can get a nice straight horizon and, uh, and I'm going to cover it up so I use slightly darker increasingly a little darker black and red to create more contrast uh, within the clouds as well uh, but now this is moving on to the hard part so <laughs> I'm going to take my other Zorn palette painting away and we're going to move down to the normal painting so this painting you see on the left it has blue and green paint in it so obviously I can create um, quite sort of uh, very watery colours, <laughs> traditional watery colours but I'm going to try and see if I can create the illusion of coolness um, by using red and yellow and I actually make a mistake here I completely forgot the sort of color mixing that I wanted to do so but I've decided to leave leave these mistakes in um, because I think that it just shows you that all artists make, mis make mistakes and no one's perfect and it all ends up um, towards the end result so I'm actually mixing um, black the black red and a bit of white to get the same color as the, cat, the clouds basically just that kind of purpley gray um, color um, and the reason this is a mistake is because I'm trying to create a coolness uh, so the water um, it looks cooler and more bluey and more green compared to the sunset and obviously using the red was the mistake um, I should have mixed it uh, the black, the yellow ochre and the white which I will come to later but what I did, uh, what I did was doing here as I was just trying to just get a sort of just the colour down I think a lot of artists make make mistake of uh, of trying to paint it perfectly straight away you know do all the detail first and, and actually what's better is just um, getting the colour down uh, getting some shaping and uh, and then you can layer it layer it up um, that's what that's what's great about acrylic paints is you can layer it up like oils so I'm still using the wrong color <laughs> but I'm lightening it up with some white so just trying to recreate that um, translucency of the wave uh, on the left hand side there's what when painting water when painting waves um, you have where the water where the waves are flat and settled and calm it will begin to reflect the sky so I'm just adding a little bit more of the sort of pinky lighter pinky color uh, in here to to do that uh, which I actually do more later uh, and where you've got the actual wave as it sort of comes up to a crest it can be quite pale quite green um, quite see-through and then sort of in between that the calmness and the top of the crest of the wave you will have a sort of very deep blue bluey green color and that's kind of how waves work and then the further they go back they just get more um, sort of just a darker blue so it's, it's only the sort of waves that are closer you might see more detail you get to see the more pale greens and things like that so so I'm still continuing um, with the wrong colour <laughs> but what I am doing here is just lighting up, kind of lining it out so imagine this is more sort of drawing out the shape of the waves that I want to work on later and I'm just using a lighter colour, a lighter pink, this, this is okay this colour because we are going to be using a lighter pink colour same as the sky to reflect the sky so the, the colors we see in the sunset we want to reflect on the calmer parts of the water so I'm just adding just adding some lighter parts which is just the white and the the red with a little bit of tiny little bit of black in there and uh, and again just just going over that and I think am I am I reaching the point now um, no I'm still working with the wrong color <laughs> So, but what I am doing is I'm just marking out the the uh, the waves in the distance. So, and they they will have less translucency. They're going to be um, have a lot less detail. Um, they're going to be more narrow because they're further away. It's the same with clouds. The further things are away, the more narrow they get. So, clouds get narrower, and the waves get narrower. So, it's only the things that are closer to us. 
so the clouds that are closer to us or the waves are going to be more sort of bigger and wider and have more shape to them so that's always a little tip to remember so what I'm doing now is I am finally using the right colors so I've got some some of the Mars black I'm mixing the white and I've got this gray color and the yellow ochre adds um, an element that makes it look green so it's and when you put it in contrast with the red and this is why I decided to leave in my mistake of using the wrong color is because you can see how this Zorn palette works because if you imagine the color wheel the opposite of red is going to be green um, so what that does is when you when you add all this sort of red and warm colors we've got red we can work with when we paint with a cooler shade so the black the white and the yellow we get the illusion of a sort of green really a gray green so and i'm just adding in the sort of lighter version of that of the yellow the black and the white just adding more of the titanium white to try and get the translucency of the top of that wave and I think that, um, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm no, no expert by any means when it comes to um, painting in general. I think I, I think I still suffer greatly from imposter syndrome, even though I've been doing it longer than than crochet. Um, I never feel confident in sort of like sort of teaching art. Um, so I always see this channel as a sort of um, a way to share tips of how I do things and the things I've picked up along the way. Um, so this, doing the Zorn palette and experimenting, it, it is a journey that is quite new to me and um, it's everything is a learning curve. So um, I'm just trying to add in the smaller wave at the front here. Obviously I've got a slightly smaller canvas because I've got this colour palette at the bottom just to show the, how dramatic uh, and how restrictive this Zorn palette uh, really is. But I wanted to just try and and just sort of get a, a, an, an essence of that uh, closer wave, which is uh, very, very translucent. It's got lots of white uh, areas and I'm just going over just trying to get those lighter, uh, lighter part of the uh, the wave. And um, it, it's strange because the the lighting whilst doing this painting is actually quite orange already, so it's going to look warmer. Uh, than it actually is and uh, when I show you it at the end I put it in more of a natural light and you can see that this these colour I'm working with at the moment is actually a lot greener than it looks it looks quite sort of dark green and grey at the moment <laughs> so I'm just toning that down the same colours the black the yellow ochre and the white um, with just a little bit more black to get the darker areas which are going to be below the crest of the wave but uh, before the calmness of the water and I'm just filling that in in the background. I need to add in the reflection of the sky uh, in the foreground. It's still quite dark, so I do that after. I'm just working on just getting that the, the shape of the waves, the more distant waves, the more narrow waves. And uh, you can see it looks very, very almost black at the moment. Um, so now I'm going in to really divide that up now um, with reflecting the sky. And this is pretty much the same color that I started off with. It's the black with the red and a lot of white. So it's a really pinky color. And um, with a slight hint of gray, just to tone it down a bit so it's not quite as bright as the sunset. And now I'm just going below the darker areas of the waves to, to just get that reflection of the sky and normally you might notice I don't use a lot of water so when I do reflections I finally add a little bit of water to my brush because I tend to paint with a dry brush um, I just find it's just the way I like to work uh, with acrylics using a dry brush and layering it up um, but when I do these sort of reflections I like to add a little bit of water because it makes it more translucent and it becomes more like watercolor in a way it just sort of dries a little bit paler it's less dramatic um, than just using the pure the pure paint so I'm just continuing on and uh, eventually I'm going to finally add in the the reflection of the calmer part of the water in the foreground so 
and just off screen below screen I've actually got some kitchen roll some tissue and I'm just taking off some of the some of the paint it's a little bit too too bright so and here we go we're going to um, here again just adding a bit of white and um, I'm going back to work on the the foreground wave so we're going back to the cooler colors here which is the black the yellow ochre and the white just to bring up that contrast um, and this is what's quite this is what this is what is quite good if I can get my words up um, about the using a restrictive palette especially the Zorn palette um, if you wonder where the name comes from Zorn it comes from a, a Swedish um, artist who lived I'm just totally googling this now I'm not an expert <laughs> he lived from 1860 to 1920 and he was a Swedish artist called Anders Zorn and he was the one who used it a lot and he used it mainly in portraiture and and, and things like that so using it in seascapes is kind of a very different challenge I felt so I'm just going back in and, and creating the more translucent or lighter to bring up those contrasts, get those brighter colours to offset the uh, the darker colours. And I feel that it's it's definitely getting less warm though because I really wanted to, using the, making the mistake of using the red and the black and the white on the water, it did make it harder to cool the colours down afterwards. It was okay for the reflection of the sky but uh, it did make it harder I think so yeah that was a mistake <laughs> but um, I'm just adding the same greeny colour but with more black so it's darker and just working in some of the more sort of darker ocean colour just before the reflection of the sky so it's the real deep ocean colour which on the left hand side you can see is where that real sort of Payne's grey blue and uh, and green that I mixed together and not being able to use Payne's grey which is my go-to colour when painting water um, was really really hard and incredibly frustrating actually um, but I think it really challenges you, challenges you as an artist. It, it tests your ability to look at contrasting in painting, which is something I'll talk about another time. I think a lot of artists can get wrapped up in just using colour and we tend to forget the contrast we need between our colours. And what that means is if you imagine a black and white photo, you can very clearly see the whites and the blacks and, and all the definition of the greys in between and um, I think sometimes if we take a painting where we sort of lacked using contrast and looking at that and put it into black and white with a filter or something we can see oh if it looks too grey we haven't got those those real darks and those real lights and especially in watercolour I find that you can often end up with a bit of a muddy mess so it, it is this is a really good challenge to help you with your contrasting in a painting so I'm just really, I've washed my brush now and I'm just getting the white and no black. So it's just the white, the red and the yellow ochre to get a nice peachy pink. And that's really just to work on the reflection of the sky, just to bring up the uh, brighter parts, uh, especially on the um, foreground. So you can't really see it on camera at the moment, but it does look a lot pinker than you can actually see there. It looks like I'm not really doing very much, but uh, you can sort of see it coming together a little bit. And I, I'm feeling a little bit more comfortable at this stage. I think when I get to this stage, whether I'm using a limited palette or not, once I've got to this sort of stage where I can start adding detail, I think it's the more enjoyable stage. Getting the colour down and um, I feel is the more challenging part of painting. Um, it's it's sort of like it, you have to get it right <laughs> and I feel that if you get it right first time then it's brilliant you can go straight on to the fun part the detail um, so I do find that part harder so but now I'm finally adding in the reflection the calmer part of the wave here in the foreground with the pink so this is obviously a much warmer colour um, so it should offset the the greyness and the greeniness of just using the black yellow and white so I'm using just the red and the white 
to get it nice and sort of warm and pinky to reflect that sky which um, hopefully will bring this foreground wave um, have a little bit more definition a little bit more shape and look a bit less dark and muddy and uh, and then you know this this painting is is nearly finished so there's not a huge amount left to do we can finally take off the tape and hope that our sunset colors match the reflections in the water so I'm quite happy with that and then what I do now this is um, a little trick that I, I love to do I use a cocktail stick um, to create the the white crests of the waves and the reason I, the reason I use this is it's none of my brushes even really really small brushes they just they're too just too soft um, and even the real sort of harder acrylic brushes the small ones they they just don't get the definition that I want so I find using a cocktail stick it gives me the ability to get very very fine detail um, and I also like the way the cocktail stick just sort of scratches the white paint around um, so you it's more abstract you don't really know where the white bits are going to end up so um, that can be quite fun because you can end up with, as Bob Ross would say, happy accidents <laughs> um, with parts of the rest of the wave just catching the light, um, which I just don't feel that I can do personally with a brush as easily. So I'm just doing that on the mainly on the foreground wave where it's very pale and then just adding a few sort of crests of waves in the distance um, just for a little bit more interest. Um, and definition so it looks like there's more going on and then I think that's pretty much it I think we're we're kind of there now and um, yeah so I, uh, I hope you enjoyed this more sort of loggy chat kind of a time lapsey painting I love dragging the cocktail stick sideways like that in the very very far distance you get these little hints of crests of waves and I added a slightly too much there <laughs> but um, there we go we can put our reference painting away and have a look at this painting close up what I do now to take the tape off I just um, I use masking tape to mask it out just creates a nice clean edge and then I use a hairdryer just to warm up the glue so it doesn't rip the paper as easily and um, and there we go we're gonna have a look at it close up and I'll also move it into natural light as well so it's a little bit less orangey this light so you can hopefully see the contrast of the greens appearing against the warmness of the reds <laughs> but uh, if you want to give this a try I highly recommend it um, definitely do it as an experiment pick one of your favorite paintings that you like to paint for me it is water you might have a still life or a fantasy painting um, a portrait or something like that and then just pick these four colors and see if you can recreate it using these colors and there you go you can see the coolness there we go natural light you can see the coolness of the greens and the grays and there we go thanks for joining me guys I'll see you soon for some more arty fun